Cartesian format can also be in three dimensions. All right, so we draw this here. X, Y, and Z. If I have my force vector here, okay, it can be resolved into the x direction, force x, and it is acting at an angle alpha. Force y, acting at an angle here, beta. Force Z acting at an angle gamma. Similar to Cartesian format in 2D, force X is going to equal to the magnitude of the force times cosine of alpha, the angle between the force and the X axis. Force Y is going to equal to the magnitude of force cosine of beta. Force Z is going to equal to force times the cosine of gamma. Okay, three different angles. All the angles are directly to those axes. Also similar to 2D, the magnitude of the force is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares. So that is force X squared plus force Y squared plus force Z squared and similar to 2D I can represent a unit vector of my force with just the direction so that is going to be cosine alpha I plus cosine beta J plus cosine gamma K K is the Z direction and for reference, just in case you need it, the magnitude of the unit vector is equal to 1, which is equal to the square root of cosine alpha squared plus cosine beta squared plus cosine gamma squared. And that does work in 2D as well. If I want to represent the force vector in magnitude and direction, I generally represent it with F and then my three angles, alpha, beta, and gamma. So let's do an addition problem with 3D and in Cartesian format. If we are given C, y and x all right let's say force one here acts entirely in the yz plane force one is equal to three kilonewtons and since I can't draw, I will try to do little dotted lines here so you see that this is within plane and it is acting at 30 degrees from the z-axis. And then I have force 2 that is acting along the negative x-axis. Force 2 is equal to 75 kilonewtons and then I'm going to put a force 3 in here force 3 that again is acting entirely on the ZY plane 1.5 kilonewtons and it is acting 
at a four three five. Okay, bear with me. We're in a 2D world and I'm having to represent a 3D concept. I want to find the resultant vector, which is equal to force vector 1 plus force vector 2 plus force vector 3. I want that both in Cartesian format and magnitude and direction. So first thing that I'm going to do is put everybody in Cartesian format. Force 1 is going to equal to, okay, it's entirely in the YZ plane, which means there is zero for the I component. So I have negative 3 sine of 30 degrees, a J, see, and then I wrote an I anyway, and then plus 3 cosine of 30 degrees K. All right, this is in one plane, so we can look at this as a right triangle right here. So we have a horizontal and a vertical. This horizontal is in the Y direction. The vertical is in the Z direction. This is going to equal to 0I minus 1.5J plus 2. 598k and we are still in kilonewtons. You may be asking why I put the zero over here when I didn't have it in my equation. We need it as a placeholder so that we can line everything up when we do our addition at the end. Spare with me and you'll see my train of thought here. Force 2, okay, force 2 acts entirely in the negative x direction. So I'm going to skip the math part and go straight to negative 0.75i plus 0j plus 0k kilonewtons. And see, we're lining up everybody by letter. So that's why I have that 0i here, because it lines up with that 0.75. And then I put my j and my k. As you get more comfortable with Cartesian format, the placeholders will not be necessary, but I'm using them for now. Force 3. We do need to resolve force 3. And again, I'm going to use similar triangles. So we have 3 fifths of 1.5j plus 4 fifths of 1.5k, which gives us 0i plus 0.9j plus 1.2k kilonewtons. And I can draw a line here and add these three things together. Adding all my i's together, I get negative 0.75i. Adding all my j's together, I have negative 0.6j. And then my k direction, adding those together, I have 3.80k in three significant digits. Kilonewtons is equal to the direction of my resultant vector. Let's box that in. So there it is in Cartesian format. We also wanted it in magnitude and direction. So we can find the magnitude of my resultant vector by taking the square root of the sum of the squares, so negative 0.75 squared plus negative 0.6 squared plus 3.80 squared. Yes, I know the negative signs are going to square out and they don't matter, but I'm putting them here so you can see exactly where all my numbers came from. The magnitude for my resultant force is 3.92 kilonewtons. And then I need to find the direction. Now I have to do three separate directions here. So rearranging my equations that I wrote way up here. Alpha is going to equal to the inverse cosine of 
my x direction negative 0 0.75 over the magnitude 3.92 kilonewtons and kilonewtons. Yes, the negative sign does matter here. So alpha is going to equal to 101 degrees from the x-axis. Beta is equal to the inverse cosine of negative 0 0.6 kilonewtons over 3.92 kilonewtons and that's going to give me 98.8 degrees and gamma is equal to the inverse cosine of 3.80 kilonewtons over 3.92 kilonewtons and that gives me an angle of 14.2 degrees meaning the resultant vector in magnitude and direction can be represented as 3.92 kilonewtons at 101 degrees 98.8 degrees 14.2 degrees